Hello and welcome to today's video. Sumner and I are here in sunny Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And if you don't know me, I'm Ali Hobart. I'm Sumner's wife and I take care of all of the logistics of our Amazon business. So I'm joining Sumner here on the channel to hopefully give you guys even more value. And today we're going to be talking about how to create your uh, shipping plan in Seller Central and particularly how to use the send to Amazon workflow, which is the new workflow um, that Amazon's introducing that I do believe it's going to become the standard for the majority of the products and types of shipments across all marketplaces. So before we get started, do not forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell because we have so much good content here and we're planning on bringing even more valuable content here. So you can, this way you can be notified of all the new videos, posts, announcements, everything. So now let's get to it. From your seller center account, go and hover over inventory and click on manage inventory. Then for the product that you want to create your shipping plan for, click on the little arrow next to the edit button and then select send slash replenish inventory. Now, before we move forward, if you're taken to the old workflow that looks kind of like this, you can just click on this link right here, send to Amazon. But I believe that Amazon's now sending everyone to the new workflow. But just in case that you know, this is where you would click to go to the new workflow. And if you are taken to the new workflow, but you don't want to follow this new workflow, you want to go back to the old one, you can just click on right now. Amazon is providing this link to go back to the old workflow. But as I said, I do believe it's going to become um, they're going to get rid of the old one and this is going to become the standard for everything. So let's go back to the step by step of the new workflow. OK, so once you click on the sand slash replenish inventory, you're taken to this. And uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to select your ship from address. If you have never created a shipping plan before, then this is going to be blank right here. And you're going to be prompt right away to get uh, to put the new ship from address. If this is not the first time, then be careful to always look at the option that it's showing here, especially if you have more than one, which if you have more than one supplier or warehouse, you most likely will have. So always make sure that you look at the ship from address and then you can click to select a new one um, that you've already used or to create a new address. So once you click on that, as I said, you can add a new address or you can select any of the old ones if you've already used one previously. Um, now, do not forget that if you are using a, an address from China, do not forget, do not forget to ask your supplier for three things like the full address, including the city, the district and the province, because Amazon does require those three factors. And a lot of times suppliers do not give the province or is it's the district. I'm not certain, but make sure you ask specifically for that. And a lot of people ask us, especially in the group, if you're not part of the Facebook group yet, you have to join. There's an amazing community there and we're only growing. We're always trying to answer as many questions as we can every single day when we can. But anyways, a lot of people ask us that which address to use. Can I use a different address? Can I use an address, for example, in California so I can get most likely get a warehouse, a destination warehouse that is closest to the port? Because if you're shipping from China, most likely your shipment is going to go uh, to the LA port. So a lot of people want, you know, obviously faster um, to get their products faster into Amazon warehouse, Amazon's warehouse. So here's the thing. Yes, you can use another address. Just be aware that that it will be your return address. So if there's any issues with your shipment and the carrier needs to return to sender, it's going to go to that address that you used. If you have any 3PL, any warehouse, any third party logistics company, then I would highly recommend that you do use their address within the US because you probably do want to get a, um, a destination warehouse closer to them. And then lastly, 
Also, I'm going, you're going to see this at the end, but if you do use an address within the US and you're shipping from China, you have to make sure you do not purchase Amazon's um, carrier labels. And you're going to understand what, I, what I'm talking about soon. But just to make it clear, input your address here, then you can just confirm. You're going to be brought back to this page and then you're going to create a new packing template for that product. So you only have to do this once for every packing situation. You're going to see what I mean for each product. So once you click on that, you're going to um, ask to put a packing template name. And um, I usually like to do, for example, the product name and how many units are in the carton. You at least that makes sense for us because sometimes, for example, for a certain product, um, depending on the shipping arrangements, we'll ship it 100 units per case or 120 units per case. It depends. So, for example, I could I would put water bottle 100. So I can easily select later on from the options, and I know that's the packing template created. So create a uh, packing template name. Then how many units per box? and um, then the box dimensions and the box weight and pay attention because it requests you to put it in inch and pounds and a lot of times your supplier is going to give those you uh, that information to you in centimeters and kilograms so make sure you convert um, and uh, then it's going to ask for the prep for each unit you can scroll down if you need any extra wrapping or for example bubble wrap or any kind of special preparation if you want amazon to do that then you would select it here and there's going to be a fee later um, calculated before you finish your shipping plan but if not the very last option is going to be no prep needed which is the most cases if your supplier is doing all of the packing and everything which you should probably go with that, that option because it will most likely be cheaper and then who labels the units meaning who is going to put the fnsku labels in each product as well as the shipping label on the cartons and amazon's only interested in know if it's going to be them or you or anyone you hired so most likely you're going to say seller so leave it by seller even if it's your supplier labeling and then click on save and then afterwards, after you create that shipping template, you're going to see that you have this drop down menu and you can click on it and you can create a new one. As I said, let's say for this one, for example, it was a product and it was 50 units. Let's say I want one with 75, then you could um, create a new template and just fill out that form all over again for with the new specifications, because most likely it's going to be other way or dimensions of cartons. And then later on, you can just select whatever you want very quickly for that product in the drop down menu. Okay, and then next you're going to input how many boxes of that packing template you want to send. So, for example, two boxes, and then you click on confirm. Um, and then just before just going back if you have a an inventory limit it's going to give you a red notice saying unfortunately you cannot ship for example 100 units you have to click on modify and put for example one box you can only ship 50 units it will show you just have to follow this step by step and then after it's all okay you just click on confirm and continue then you're going to be brought to step two where you have to select a ship date and it's not really a hard day meaning like if you're not able to ship by that day there's going to be a problem a problem but try to pick a, a realistic day that you think that your supplier is going to be able to ship these products or yourself if you're creating this for yourself and then uh, next you're going to select if it's going to be a small parcel delivery if it's like loose boxes with units inside or if it's an ltl less in the truckload so if you're palletizing your um your shipment then you would click on this one but most cases it's going to be small parcel delivery and right now it's covering a little bit the the calendar is covering but this is where you're going to receive the destination warehouse address or destination warehouses um, as you can see for example i was creating a, a shipping plan for two boxes and amazon has split my shipment into one warehouse in texas and one in maryland um, and it says exactly here how many let's say you had like eight boxes it says how many would need to go uh, to each one if they decide to split 
Now, a lot of people see this as a bad thing because it can increase the shipping um, costs from, um, from China or from wherever you are shipping from. But I actually would encourage you to go along with what, what Amazon gives you because there's a reason. If you only get one warehouse, Amazon is actually going to distribute, after they receive all of your cartons, they are going to distribute themselves everything throughout their, their distribution centers across the country. So it may actually take longer for your products to be available, to be sold on Amazon if you, if you do get just one warehouse. I'm not saying that is the case, but it could. And when it splits, it's already distributed a little bit more across the country and once checked in and once scanned and everything and, and received by the Amazon warehouse staff, your products might actually be available for purchase a lot faster. So that's actually not a bad thing. But anyways, be sure to copy this address and give it to your supplier, the, the destination address, so they can give you a more accurate um, shipping cost. And then over here, you're going to select the shipping carrier. And going back to um, what I said about the ship from address, if the uh, ship from address is within the same country that you're shipping to, so for example, if it's a warehouse that or your own house within the US and you're shipping to an Amazon warehouse in the US, then you're going to have the option to purchase Amazon an Amazon partner carrier label. And I, if that's the case, if you are shipping from the US and you not just put the US address, then I would highly encourage you to use that because these are discounted prices. If you go on your own to UPS, for example, you're going to get higher prices. So it would show right here. If your ship from address is from the same country, it would show the total right here. But in this case, this was a Chinese um, address. So you just have to select the carrier that you're going to be using. If you're not certain which one, if you don't know if it's DHL, FedEx, you can just select other and it'll be fine. But if you know, go ahead and select the one that you want. Let me move myself out of the way. And then right here, you're going to see all of the charges of the shipping plan. This includes any prep, labeling and everything. Remember when you're, we were creating the packing template, if you selected anything other than no prep needed, then there's going to be a fee per unit that it's going to show up right here and you have to accept the charges if you want to continue with the shipping plan. Or if you're using the Amazon partner um, carrier, then the total it's going to show right here as well if you're selected and you accept the charges and confirm shipping. And you're going to be charged, it's either going to come out of your total balance from your, your next um, statement balance payment, or it's going to come out if you have zero balance, it's going to come out of the credit card on file. So um, either way, even if it's zero dollars, you have to click this button and accept charges and confirm shipping. And then once you do that, you're going to see all of the um, summary over here. Sorry, I almost kind of skipped one step, but you're going to be able to click on this little um, link here that says rename. And I highly encourage you to rename your shipping plans because after a while it can get very confusing if you need to find one. If for example, there was some issue and Amazon wasn't able to receive all of the units, you need to create a case or anything. So what I usually do is I, um, put the, the warehouse that I'm shipping from because we do have a partner warehouse within the US. We use Worldcraft Logistics. So I would put WCL, the product, for example, water blue water bottles, and then which shipment that is, especially when the shipment is split. So if there's two shipments, I'll put 1.1 and 1.2, but this is optional. You don't have to rename them. Amazon automatically gives you a title, FBA, something, something but I'll highly encourage you to rename them so it's easy to find later, and then you can click save. Then lastly, you just have to print your carton labels. You just have to click on the buttons here. Be sure to click on both ones if your shipment was split. Then you're going to download the PDF and send that to your supplier. Now remember, if this is not, if you didn't purchase the Amazon carrier label, then you, you still need to purchase the, the carrier label separately with your supplier, if they're arranging the shipment or if you're with your freight forwarder. Uh, but this is the just the label with the barcode so that the Amazon staff 
and Amazon warehouses can easily scan your cartons when once they receive them um, before they start getting unit by unit okay so don't forget and make sure to tell your suppliers to not place these labels on the seams of the carton so for example if you're someone's opening the box they should not go through the label or um, split the label in any way that is not allowed by Amazon and we actually have already a video here on the channel talking about all of Amazon's labels packing and shipping requirements so be sure to check that out and that's it that's how you create your shipping plan you're going to be done after your ship after your um, cartons are shipped you can come back to this shipping plan here and then mark as shipped and uh, include the tracking id which i would highly recommend as well because if there are any issues any discrepancies amazon can easily resolve that and give you the reimbursement right away instead of asking you later then you have to find that find that number again anyway it could be a headache so i would highly recommend that you input the tracking id number once you get that from your supplier and that's it that's how you create your shipping plan in seller central and also do not forget i would highly recommend that you join our facebook group um, as i said we're only growing there's tons of resources if you go here for example in the unit sections there are lots of articles and resources like supplier templates the the rfq as well as profit calculator and many many more and we're also always making announcements on the latest news from amazon if you have any questions you can you can ask us there we are always trying to answer them as fast as we can and there's also the whole community that could be experiencing things that you're experiencing as well not to mention the support so you can find us at the amazing escape plan on facebook also if you want to know more details um, all about sourcing from Alibaba, shipping to Amazon FBA and all of the logistics side then we also offer a course on Udemy and it's uh, in my opinion very affordable course that you can get the link is going to be in the description below as well as the Facebook group link it's going to be in the description below but yes if you want more information you can um, purchase this we talk about um, everything that you need to know from shipping to Alibaba all the way to Amazon FBA and lastly if you like the video do not forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell to make sure you're always up to date with all of the content um, for Amazon FBA and beyond and as always thank you so much for watching I really hope this was a helpful video God bless and I'll see you guys in future videos